Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is going to be the preview for the Fender Bassman. Um, I'm going to build Doug's version of this, so I'm just going to quickly, this is the schematic. A couple things interesting about the circuit. A lot of uh, circuits have the 12AX7. This one actually has the first stage. It's a 12AY7. Um, so we've got a bright input and a normal input. In the original, you'll see here that it uses an 820 ohm resistor and a 250 microfarad uh, or actually maybe that's a 250 volt 6 micro, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, we'll look at this in a minute on the actual one that Doug does. What he does is splits this one of them, the normal will have this, but then he creates a slightly different one for the bright channel. But um, And then it goes into uh, 12AX7, the tone stack, uh, and then, uh, well let me kind of, so here's your bright input, normal input, I'm just kind of swinging the mouse around so that won't help. This is the area I was talking about, they kind of join these two, but he does it with a separate in his build so that they each have their own uh, cathode uh, capacitor and cathode resistor. Then if you notice on the bright side they add this extra 0 .0001 mic cap that adds that bright instead of this one just has the normal one. They each have their own volume then they come into the 12x7 uh, and then uh, that goes into the tone stack here which has a treble bass and a mid and uh, there's also a presence that comes back from the negative feedback. So if you look here it starts off of the output transformer uh, on the secondary side by the speakers, they bring that in for negative feedback into here, into the circuit, but they also have a presence control with that as well, uh, right here. So the, this is um, one of the mods some people will do, and I'm, I, I'll debate it, I don't know, is they will actually put a little switch somewhere about here that is to just take that completely out, or they'll put a potentiometer in that allows them to um, dial it down to near zero instead of using the, the presence uh, itself, which is only 5K which is just kind of a subtle tweak. Um, but either, any, at any rate, uh, negative feedback does do some good things, but also it also uh, it kind of takes a little bit of the edge off of the amp, so we'll, we'll see. I might um, add a switch to just disable that. So, And then this is just the, uh, this then comes into the 12AX7 phase inverter, and then here it's got a couple of 5881s. 6L6s are used more commonly now, but I believe those are very close in tube. Uh, like the pinout's the same, the rough range is the same. I think the 5881's just a little less hot than the uh, 6L6, but you know maybe people can correct me. Another interesting thing about this circuit is that it has over here. You'll see there's four speakers. The baseman had a big cabinet with four speakers in it, four tens, I believe. And there, uh, the total impedance on the uh, secondary side is just supposed to be two ohms. And so they have four speakers in parallel that are um, designed for uh, eight ohms each, which gives you a total of two ohms. You know, uh, if I'm saying that right, I think it's parallel. That's that way. At any rate, somebody might correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they also have a small choke here, and then here's all the different, um, along the bottom, the different caps. You've got 20, 20, 20, and 8. And they're saying that they're at 600 volts, 600 volts, 600 volts, 600 volts, and 450, I think, if that's, if I'm reading that right. Uh, and then there's a small standby switch and the mains power over here at the bottom. So that's the schematic original that Fender used on the F5, the 5F6A. Uh, but let's jump over then uh, on... Doug Hoffman's website, el34world.com. He does sell these things, and uh, I'm sorry, my dog Max is kind of going nuts wrestling with Mallory, if you can hear that in the background. Uh, this is the layout, but we're going to scroll down first down to the actual schematic. And here's the schematic, the same kind of a thing, as you can see. Half of the uh, 12AY7 is up here, the other half down here. Uh, and, you know, he's got the dual ganged jacks, if you, or not, it's not, I don't know if it's called ganged, but dual jacks here, or you can do single up here. Um, but either way, you set that up, you then, uh, you know, have the both the normal and bright. I like doing the duals because the same thing I did with my Vox AC30, you can actually jumper. Uh, usually you'll input into one and then jumper from the second channel over to the other side and you end up getting your signal into both then feeds into this uh, you know segment here that's the tone stack. You actually end up with a little bit more overall uh, kind of drive and presence that pushes each side of those tubes uh, kind of combined into the the next phase which is the tone stack. So but then we the one thing I did mention here as well if you look right here the the 220 microfarad 820 is used on the normal channel, but the bright channel down here where we add the extra 100 picofarad cap um, has a different one. It has 22 microfarad, and um, generally the difference there is a 22 microfarad versus a 220 microfarad, if I understand it right, both of those are so high uh, in uh, their microfarad capacitance ranges, they're going to let almost everything through anyway. They won't block much, so I'm not sure why they used to use a 220 and why, you know, I don't think the 22 will change it much, um, but at any rate, um, uh, and then, uh, as you can see over here, is the feedback circuit, etc. So that is the circuit, not massively different, but you know, another thing I really like that Doug does is when you're looking at the uh, board layout, you can kind of see it up here at the top. This is the main board layout, but 
if you see these little lines, you need to actually pre-solder those ahead of time. And I think I showed that in my last video, how you do that. Doug also has a video on his channel if you want to look him up. But the good thing is, is he shows a board that's mostly empty, so you can see exactly where to solder all this stuff first, how to hook it up. And then once you've done that, then you can start populating the components. But uh, as you'll see here, the, the nice thing is this also shows each tube and the wiring, you know, right here, each of the tubes and their wiring and where they connect to his circuit board. He will send you this turret board and then you just have to populate it. You have to solder the wires yourselves. You have to, so it's a lot of work from your, from your side. You have to do almost all the work, but at least he's made it easier for you to have a, like a map. This is like a nice map, and that's one of the things that he's done that's great. You've seen some of mine. I've tried to do them. I have a lot of errors. He's spent a ton of time not only doing these, but also building them himself or having others on the forums build them and confirm that these work as expected. And his is a lot more well thought out. Mine, I tend to not do things like, for example, that you need 200 ohm resistors to ground for the heaters. He always puts those on the board. I tend to kind of just uh, slap them right on one of the lines straight to, to ground. But, you know, this is a little bit more of a, a nicer way to do it. So... Uh, then he also shows just how you wire up the transformers uh, into the rectifier uh, and the output transformer and the uh, actual capacitors here as well for the power stage stuff, the A, B, C, and D rails. So uh, that in a, in a nutshell is all of it. You can also see he's got his Hoffman Amps. Uh, it's his main website, but either that or the EL34 World, both great websites. I link to my forum posts about these every time. I'll create a forum post about this build uh, at some point. I may not have it on this first video because effectively I haven't started the build yet, but once I start the build, uh, I'll kind of create a little, I'll probably start posting some information about the build there just so that it's linkable to the videos as well. People can look both places. So uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please do put them in the uh, comment section. Let me know. We're uh, interested in finding out what people want us to build. I'm, I'm uh, looking at other builds as well, but this is the next one. So please let us know what you think and uh, keep your amps biased hot and your jams a coming. Thanks.